Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Ryan. March is Women's History Month. It's an important time to learn, honor, and commemorate the many contributions women have made to the world. Today, we learn about suffragette Susan B. Anthony. Did you know there was a time when women weren't allowed to vote? Well, Susan B. Anthony, a.k.a. Aunt Susan, helped to bring change to that in order to promote equality and freedom for all. Today we read Marching with Aunt Susan, Susan B. Anthony and the Fight for Women's Suffrage, written by Claire Rudolph Murphy with illustrations by Stacy Shewitt. Let's hop on in. Papa took my brothers hiking, but not me. Strenuous exercise is not for girls, Bessie, he told me. You're not strong enough, Enie said. It's not ladylike, Charlie added. I can ride my bicycle faster than anyone on the block, I told my brothers, even you. Girls shouldn't ride bicycles either, Charlie said, and they left without me. Inside, Mama bustled around, preparing for a party. I'm strong enough to hike, I said. Papa wouldn't take me along, just because I'm a girl. You can help me get ready for the suffrage tea, Mama said. Aunt Mary will be arriving soon with our guest of honor, Miss Susan B. Anthony. Suffrage? I'm the one who's suffering. I picked up the newspaper and stared at Miss Anthony's photo. She looks like a crabby old lady. <laughs> a crabby old lady who has fought 50 years for women's rights, Mama said, even when people threw garbage at her and called her names. At the tea, Everybody swarmed around Miss Anthony. They called her Aunt Susan, even though they weren't related to her. She spoke about the long fight for equal rights. She told us that children should grow up in a world where both men and women were free. Later, Aunt Mary introduced me to Aunt Susan. Why can't girls do the same things as boys? I asked her. She shook her head. When I was your age, my teacher thought only boys were smart enough to learn long division. That's not right, I said. Come to the rally in San Francisco tomorrow, Bessie. Women's votes can help change the world. Golden Gate Auditorium was so crowded that I could barely breathe. Aunt Susan stood on a stage surrounded by hundreds of roses. Her voice thundered across the hall. The votes of all the people, including women with men, will surely bring about the wisest and best government the world has ever seen. I pulled a white handkerchief out of my purse and joined the sea of flags waving in the air. The day after the rally, I rode my bicycle over to my best friend Rita's house. You should have heard Aunt Susan speak yesterday, I told her. My papa says ladies shouldn't speak in public, Rita said. Aunt Susan says that girls are just as smart as boys. We should get to help make decisions, too. Papa decides everything in our family, Rita said. That's not right. I looked at my best friend. Someday, I want to vote. Let's see if we can help out at suffrage headquarters. All through the summer, Rita and I wrote letters licked envelopes, and painted posters. As we worked, we listened to women talk. Men decide everything. They even decide if we should get to vote. Men decide how the children are raised. 
Men decide how the household money is spent. I don't understand, I said to Rita. I get to spend my allowance any way I want. And Mama makes decisions about lots of purchases. Not at our house, Rita shook her head. Papa keeps track of every penny. The week before the election, we visited a factory in San Francisco. Rows and rows of girls sat hunched over, sewing in a dark room. Aunt Susan encouraged them to come to our suffrage parade. Afterward, a girl walked up to Aunt Susan. Me and my sister did some extra sewing to help the campaign. She handed over two dimes. If women win the vote, will I be able to go to school? I leaned against the wall and tried to catch my breath. I couldn't imagine not learning how to read and write. Back at headquarters, I asked Aunt Susan why those girls didn't go to school. Many parents can't make enough money to feed their families, she told me. So the children have to work. Can women getting the vote change that? I asked. Aunt Susan nodded. We can work to pass laws that will help adults and children. I dumped out all the coins in my purse and handed them to her. If those girls can give money, I should too. Later, I painted a picture of the factory girl on a banner for the people. Rita printed the letters. Sunday afternoon before the vote, Rita, Mama, and I marched along, carrying our banner. The crowd cheered as we sang new lyrics to my country, Tis of Thee. Our country, now from thee, claim we our liberty in freedom's name. Guarding homes, altar fires, daughter of patriot sires, their zeal our own inspires, justice to claim. But then men began shouting, Women belong in the kitchen. Girls belong at home. Rita's father appeared and dragged her away. No daughter of mine will parade in the streets. A boy splattered an egg down the front of my white dress. What do you want to be, a man? He yelled. I stood frozen, watching the oozing yellow stain spread until Mama picked up Rita's end of the banner, and we marched on. When he, when he heard what had happened, Papa bought me a new white dress. If only it was that easy to win the election. Monday after school, Mama and I stood at the ferry launch and held up a new sign. Remember your daughters. Vote yes on referendum number six. I couldn't tell if I got more pats on the head or grumbles from the men walking by, but Mama said it only matters how they vote tomorrow. The day after the election, my brothers raced me home from school. Charlie grabbed the newspaper off the front porch. Women lose the vote, he shouted. I leaned my bicycle against the house and snatched the newspaper out of his hand. What are you so mad about? asked Eni. Someday you'll get to vote and you don't even care. Mama is as smart as Papa and I am as smart as you. We should get to vote too. Mama picked up my bicycle. Aunt Susan says that a bicycle gives a woman freedom. Teach me how to ride, Bessie. It's hard to do, I said, sitting down on the steps. When you first tried to ride, you kept falling and scraping your knees, she reminded me. But you didn't give up. Finally, I showed her what to do, 
how to mount the bicycle, balance, pedal, and drag her feet to stop. When Papa arrived home, Mama was wobbling up and down the street. I'm sorry about the election, Bessie, he said. Girls shouldn't, should be allowed to do the same things as boys, Papa. Why don't we go hiking this Saturday, he asked. And Sunday, there's a rally for the next suffrage campaign, I said, grabbing Papa's hand. Come march with Mama and me. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this tale of Susan B. Anthony and the fight for women's suffrage. Even though that vote didn't pass in the story, eventually it did, and women earned their suffrage, a.k.a. their right to vote, which I think was an enormous step towards equality for all. I truly admire Susan B. Anthony's fight for freedom and justice, and I think we should take this lesson to heart. We also saw during the length of this story women coming together in order to take political action, and I believe we can use this lesson to help ourselves. That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this Women's History Month story. I encourage you to check out other stories on this channel. And until next time, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye now.